Let's turn now to Donald Trump's hush money trial in New York, which is hearing today from the prosecution's star witness. Trump's former fixer and lawyer, Michael Cohen, has been testifying. He said Trump feared stories about his personal life as he weighed a run for U.S. president. We are anticipating he will be asked about his role arranging hush money payments ahead of Trump's first presidential campaign. Trump is in the courtroom watching this all unfold, and he spoke with the media before the trial got underway today. I've got no evidence, and I'm innocent. This is a political witch hunt, and nobody's ever seen anything like it. And it's, I tell you what, the appellate division on the judges should step in because what, what this judge is getting away with is disgraceful. This trial is rigged. It's dishonest. It's a disgrace to New York. It's a disgrace to the country. I should be out campaigning now instead of sitting in a very cold courthouse all day long. Michael Cohen has testified for several hours now about his relationship with Trump and how they communicated and about some texts rather exchanged with the former National Enquirer Enquirer Editor-in-Chief. CBC's Chris Reyes is outside the Manhattan Criminal Court with more. I'm going to read some quotes verbatim from inside the courtroom. Our colleague Alex Panetta is watching all of this unfold. And right now, Michael Cohen testifying about Stormy Daniels. So we're really getting into the meat of his testimony. He said on the stand that back in 2011, he heard about the adult film star Stormy Daniels uh, possibly selling her story about this alleged sexual encounter with Donald Trump. He he said to, to Trump, boss, I've got to speak with you. And then Cohen asked Trump if he knew who she was. Trump said, uh, sorry, Cohen said he told me he did. And then Trump said absolutely do it in, in terms of taking care of the story. That's back in 2011. And this would come up later on when uh, Trump was already running uh, for president. And apparently, according to Cohen, Trump told him, I took, uh, I thought you took care of the story back in 2011. And let me just walk you back to how we got to this point in Cohen's testimony. You know, right at the very beginning, the prosecution really uh, took their time methodically questioning Cohen about how his relationship started with Trump uh, back in 2006, essentially earning that term of a fixer. And Cohen said he loved working for Trump, would do anything for his boss, anything to make him happy, that he would lie for him, a bully for Donald Trump. And fast forward to 2015, just about a month after Donald Trump announced he was running for president and a meeting took place here in New York City between David Pecker, the former publisher of the National Enquirer, Michael Cohen, and Donald Trump. And and together, those three men, again, these are allegations from the prosecution that Michael Cohen is trying to substantiate, they devised this catch and kill scheme, essentially using the tabloid as a tool to take damaging stories about Trump and kill them, get them away from the public in order to help his campaign. And what they're really trying to do here is put uh, pieces pieces of a puzzle together that this catch and kill scheme uh, conspiracy happened, that uh, these stories were hidden from uh, the public uh, by being misrepresented in Trump's business records. And all of this was done in order to defraud voters and and hide it from them ahead of the 2016 campaign. All of this a crime, a class E felony in the state of New York. And it's really Michael Cohen that connects all of these dots more than any witness called by the prosecution. The question though is, will the jury trust him given his problematic resume? I put that question to a criminal attorney who's been following this case very closely. Have a listen to what he said. At the end of the day, though, the prosecution has to trust that all of these other witnesses, because they corroborate Michael Cohen, that the defense, that the jury won't have to trust Michael Cohen. They just need to trust him a little bit, <laughs> and they need to see how he fits in with all the other witnesses. And they have to remember that if this guy is so bad, why did Trump employ him for so long? It appears that the strategy here for, from the prosecution is, is sort of to be open with the jury about Michael Cohen's reputation as a liar. But 
that it would be impossible that he was lying and all the other witnesses as well are lying about the story if they all corroborate each other. And after this questioning from the prosecution, of course, cross-examination comes next, and you can expect that that will be full of fireworks. And then what the defense will try to do is really topple the dominoes uh, by, by uh, undermining Michael Cohen's credibility in front of this jury.